<laughs> Shut the <that> button. <laughs> Just go with the flow, take on whatever challenges you can, that would be my advice. That is the part. The growth of any country is dependent on the infrastructure facilities present in the country. And in India, as we are aiming a $5 trillion economy, we need this infrastructure facility in place. In today's episode of Break Talks with Siddharth Nata, we have a lady who is a civil engineer and has done her post graduation from Nikmar. She is director capital projects with PwC and has expertise from concept to commissioning of large infrastructure projects like highways, ports, etc. She manages these big infrastructure projects which help the country's development in terms of infrastructure growth and hugely contributes to the economy. She also has expertise in strategy and logistics sector. I welcome you, Shruti, to Break Talks with Siddharth Nata. Thank you, Siddharth. Pleasure to be here. So, uh, Shruti, how the journey has been from a uh, you know, civil engineer to uh, consulting today? Right. Uh, uh, that's a long journey, as you said. Um, so, 25 years, it's uh, almost a quarter of a century now. Mm-hmm. Beginning from consulting, you know, just as a trainee, um, mm-hmm. you know, you, you're working with an architectural firm in one of, in an annex of a house to working for a, one of the largest corporate, uh, you know, project developers and now one of the big four. So, um, long journey, not been easy, but I'd say it's turned out well and uh, I've been lucky as well. So many roles in all these years, how were you able to flex yourself so, uh, you know, so well? And I think the basic uh, 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 aspects that has helped me more is, you know, um, um, uh, change, uh, as we all know, change is the only constant. And I've tried to, you know, imbibe that and go with the flow, most of it. So there are a lot of things you need to unlearn. There are a lot of things you need to learn. Um, you should have that kind of, uh, you, know, you know, the passion to, to mm-hmm. grow, to, to get involved, to get accepted within that organization. It needs a lot of hard work. It's not easy. It's very frustrating. Definitely. You know, you're getting into a place where people are already well settled, etc. Right. So, you know, you have to win their confidence, win their trust. So, uh, uh, when you say infrastructure, what do you specifically mean by that? Uh, so, in the context of my specific experience, it's been the maritime sector and uh, the related logistic sectors. Oh. So, maritime sector would say, you know, you would say ports of mm-hmm. various sizes, etc. Mm-hmm. And uh, waterways, mm-hmm. because they feed into the ports mostly. Right. And also a little bit of, you know, landside logistics, etc. Because they become the hub of, you know, mm-hmm. uh, feeding into the ports or taking cargo away from the ports. So, that's been the summary of the uh, projects mm-hmm. that I've worked in. Can you name a few projects that you know? Uh, right, right. So most, so as I said, uh, my my role. Uh, so when I was involved in the, the the logistics and maritime sector, it was from a developer's or an investor's point of view. So mm-hmm. it's been mostly in terms of um, uh, evaluation of projects uh, and whether the, you know the investment potential of those projects. Mm-hmm. So actually looked at all the major ports in the country. We have twelve of them. So you know they come up with various terminals, etc. So evaluated business plans of those projects. Was lucky to be a part of uh, one of the projects in Vizag that we were able to take forth. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've evaluated a lot of you know all the travel almost on the entire coastline, uh, looking for you know greenfield projects. Uh, that's something that we worked on. We worked on something in in Tamil Nadu in Kadalore. We were trying to build up something in uh, Orissa. Worked on a project in Maharashtra. So. Various so almost all projects. parts of the country. Uh, yes, little bits, <laughs> bits. Yeah, as I said, I was uh, got, got to travel, and you can't do these sitting in offices. You have to be there at the site to see the potential. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the my most uh, the project close to my heart was uh, we were doing a t- uh, tank terminal for oil projects in Fujairah. So mm-hmm. I was um, um, fortunate to be a part of um, you know from concept and actually from paper or idea to paper to then actually implementing and operationing. Yeah. Uh, being a leader in the construction industry and you know being a woman, how difficult it was for you you know to navigate this whole journey and right. were there any challenges or any instances you know that you would like to share? I mean uh, uh, women have made a lot of progress you know in the, in the construction and in the infrastructure sector a lot but um, 
considering the ports in the maritime sector that's uh, especially if you go out in the field it's still a very very male dominated uh, you know area so when you would go to these sites etc and that time more of the initiatives were coming from the government sector so at come right. in major ports um, you know uh, the capacity of women over there is mostly in the secretarial or the administrative world mm. so so it used to be very odd to enter a room you know and uh, the firstly uh, the first impression was of the of the audience was that probably you're in the wrong place mm. uh, so uh, that's not uh, you've come into the wrong room and when you're there probably you just here for the cosmetic purpose of it so uh, but yes you know, the the way you can actually adapt to it is you do your research mm. you be prepared for these meetings and uh, sometimes you just need to be loud or you just need to uh, um, interject or some find or find a gap in the conversation mm-hmm. to make your point and then uh, the industry is very interested i would say that you know when you've made a point and mm-hmm. they they see the value of it mm-hmm. uh, you, you get a hearing so I, i think that way it was it was funny and it was uh, sometimes very odd but yes at the end of it it would uh, turn up fine yeah So uh, you know as we are focusing currently towards 5 trillion economy how would the infrastructure particularly port and waterways will be helping us to achieve that right so a very valid question so you know india is actually the economy of india is very domestic oriented it's more of the internal need that we have it's it's, it's highly driven by that the production and the consumption but uh, to reach to that exponential uh, level we are and and you see that while we're doing make in india yeah. uh, the concept of make in india etc and the embed you know focus on getting the investors the outside industries back to india etc in the wake of you know covid china and those issues uh, the to to reach that exponential value you'll have to become slightly export oriented also mm-hmm. huh? your demands of uh, your demands for imports and inputs to the industries which are being set up initially will also increase so the ports become actually your gateway for this 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 connection of trade and commerce the domestic with the international and that's where the value is also going to come and that's where the multiple or multifold growth is going to come so i think ports play a major role and that is why recently uh, uh, the government of india has launched the pm gati shakti project which is actually focusing on on mobilizing more efficient more comprehensive and much more integrated uh, you know infrastructure logistics infrastructure mm-hmm. and ports become the gateway to india as i said we currently handling 90% 5% of val- uh, volume and 65% by value of the trade in india is handled through ports uh, waterways are the most uh, you know non polluting mm-hmm. and uh, they can become the most efficient way of connecting the inland Uh, uh which in line i mean the uh, the north the, the the areas which are not connected to the water line water uh, front of the country how they can connect it to the ports okay. so you have clusters in northeast uh, north region north east region you have clusters in northwest regions how those can be connected with waterways as a efficient mode and um, uh, while we are going towards more energy efficiency sustainability low emissions so waterways provide that natural you don't have to construct ramp uh, mm-hmm. you know roads you don't need more land yeah, you don't need to yeah these are natural water is already there yeah natural path which is already available which you need to leverage yeah okay. so that's how so um, that's why i think government of india is focusing a lot on development of waterways we have nw1 which is the ganga a mm-hmm. uh, lot of freight terminals and now a lot of focus on um, uh, community jetties you know pro- supporting the livelihoods and uh, many of these steps have already been taken yes yes so so uh, for um, for the uh, nw1 or the ganga there is the jal marg vikas program which is a world bank funded project mm-hmm. uh, it's almost 5000 crore project which is um, under which they are actually looking at developing the the terminals the mm-hmm. the onshore infrastructure they they're doing a lot of dredging works navigation aid works river training river conservancy works are being done to make these more reliable in terms of you know uh, navigability and to give that uh, private sector that confidence of of uh, moving cargo through these similarly in uh, in in, uh, in assam also uh, the government of assam is actually doing a lot of work for developing that inter you know because um, uh, brahmaputra literally dissects the entire state into two north and south mm. and therefore it becomes a very important connectivity links so a lot of work is over there is also being done so what is the role of technology that you see you know playing in this sector 
Oh, that's a, that's a significant role. In fact, uh, technology. So, so uh, various components of ports, waterways, logistics. You know, we hmm. can't say ports is just one thing. There are many, many components, many, many varieties that are available in it. And technology makes uh, plays a very, very significant, very, very important role. Because logistics, you know, uh, comprise almost twenty percent of our cost of uh, GDP today um, in the country, and which is significant. Hmm. And the efficiencies that can come, you know, as a customer. I mean, simply if I say in layman's term, today if I receive any product, it has a lot element of logistics and cost in. Right. As as uh, as much as I can reduce it, hmm. the cost, the benefit gets uh, you know transferred to me. Hmm. So therefore, it's a very important role. And if I see in some parts. In some components that I was saying, for example, container terminals. If I look at ports internationally, mm-hmm. I think it's reached a very, very advanced level of uh, sophistication. That today we have ports, mega ports, uh, which are manned by just four or five people. You, you don't oh. need even labor at site. Everything is automated. So that is the level that we are going. And you know, when you're looking at international uh, movements, you have cargo moving from Rotterdam to Shenzhen to to uh, to Singapore to uh, Houston, etc. How do you track all this, etc. So hmm. it's very, very advanced level of technology which is going in. Also, so while that's on the waterway or the shipping of the uh, maritime sector. So, uh, so everybody is aspiring to minimize because that's an overhead, you know, hmm. you, that's just a cost to anybody. Right. How much can you reduce? And that's how technology, you see route optimization, hmm. you see it in Uber every day. You know, how that route, while you're traveling, you see how route is being optimized. So that's also part of your logistics. If I have to move cargo from A to B, how it can be optimized. So a very, very important role in terms of tracking, in terms of optimization, in improving efficiencies, improving losses and diversions. What is the, what is the secret of your success? Uh, one is that maybe it's the impatience in me that, you know, after a certain point, I... I I won't say I get fed up, but then that stagnation in terms of growth, I feel, in terms of new things that I can or possibly do, I think that that's, uh, comes in and that's why the need to move on further, etc., explore further. I think that's one thing that has kept me going uh, throughout also. And also, and that, that impatience, you know, has always kept me going, learning more, doing more, taking more, etc., etc., um, I I don't know whether, as I said, successful or not, but that's what keeps me going on uh, these journeys. Yeah. So we will be now playing uh, a game. Mm-hmm. The name of the game is Rapid Fire. Right. <laughs> so I'll be asking you a couple of questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you have to answer it in the shortest uh, time possible. Okay. okay. Are you the boss lady in the room? Not intentionally. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one word adjective for Shruti Arora. Dependable. Indoor or outdoor? Outdoor, definitely. Consulting or development? Uh, Development, yes. Uh, Highways or waterways? Uh, Waterways. Uh, My subordinates will describe me as blank. Uh, (laughs) Short-tempered. So that's it, Shruti. Thank you so much for you know playing the rapid fire game. One piece of advice that you'd like to you know give to this younger generation. Who aspired to do you know something good? Uh, I think uh, I I feel uh, that um, that may be my old age or you know <laughs> perspective, but I feel that younger generation is becoming slightly comfortable in in what they have and what you know using the easy way out. Mm-hmm. You know, I think this is a time when you can actually go out explore. Um, not mind yourself in various constraints. I don't want to go to this city. I don't want to do this kind of work. Don't don't create those barriers for yourself. Just go with the flow. Take on whatever challenges you can. Uh, until unless you don't uh, do that, your your growth and your learning and your development will be very very limited, and uh, and your 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 vision will also be very very short sighted. So I think that's uh, just just. Just let yourself free, go explore and don't create your own boundaries and constraints, I think. That would be my advice. Thank you so much. So thank you Shruti for, you know, coming to uh, Break Talks with Siddharth Nata. It was a wonderful conversation Uh, and thank you for sharing all the great insights about the infrastructure industry and, uh, you know, your experiences of 25 years. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Siddharth. To listen to a similar kind of conversation with the leaders of the construction industry, 
keep on following uh, Brick Talks with Siddharth Nata. Like this video and uh, share it with your friends whom you think you know should get a first-hand experience of these leaders. Thank you.